this is a kit from St. James Bay, and we're going to dovetail these sides on here. So just like a regular dovetail, we're going to set them on here and mark them out, transferring the tails onto the pins. Uh, rather than using blue dicum, I'm actually just going to use the tape. Um, why? Because I don't have any blue dicum on hand. I'm not a metal worker. But I do have blue tape. Same thing, right? And then we can file back until we just touch that tape. And so this is going to be one of those things of work on it a little bit and file back a little bit and work on it a little bit and file back a little bit. The files I'm using have a safe edge on them, so I'm not grinding down into the plate below. I'm just taking it right up until it touches that line. And I'm coming in with a coarse file and then a fine file and then doing every tooth until I can come in here and look at that. It drives down in absolutely beautifully. Um, now I need to knock this side off and do the same thing to the other side. And so we'll file this side all down in and keep going on it until it just fits in there. You can see how this one has a safe side on there. allows me to work on, on both edges. Then we're going to work until we get both of these in here. And now we can move on to the next step. I want to create a block to go into the middle of this. That block will support the two sides while I peen over everything and lock it together. So I'm grabbing this large piece of uh, red oak I have on hand, and I want to make sure it's good and square um, to one of the edges, and then find out exactly how wide does this thing need to be uh, and make it onto that. And this is just a hair over two inches. It's very, very, very close to it. So I'm going to set the mark at just a little over, a little over two inches, <laughs> and then rip it down. I'm going to make this bigger than it needs to be and then plane it back precisely to the size. Uh, so I'm going to rip it down to uh, about there. that long, mark it about there, and, and, and then cut it off. You know I'm being extra precise on this. want to make sure everything is, is dead on. <laughs> now we have this block out here. I have one side square to the other, and then I can come in and square up this side to the first one as well. And the first side will end up being the bottom, and the two sides that I'm squaring it to will be the sides. And this way I can make sure the cheeks will be exactly uh, square to the bottom. I also want to make sure that I have a nice, clean, smooth surface on this. This will be a temporary block that will be held in place uh, while I'm pounding this all in. Now, originally I was going to paint it over with this punch, and then I found out, yeah, I need a little more force than that. Let's actually grab a punch, and let's do that. And of course, then I realized, wait a second, I'm using a peening hammer. Why is it called a peening hammer? Oh yeah, for peening these over. So I'm going to start with the brass pieces and mushrooming the brass and actually pushing it out from the, the steel. So we're going to set that aside and come back to it in a little bit here. This is the lever cap. It comes rough with the casting, and so we need to do all of the shaping to make it fit down. The first thing is this is actually wider than it needs to be, so I could use it on a four and a half size, or in this case I'm using the standard smoothing plane. I made the front edge nice and true and then marked everything off of that. And I want to make sure, yeah, okay, it does actually fit between. So I have to come in with a hacksaw and cut off a little bit on either side of this. Um, everything is much larger than it needs to be, and I'm going to spend some time cleaning this up. Most of this is just going to be done with files, starting with rough files and then taking them to smoother files and, and then to smoother files and then coming back and cleaning up the leftovers from that. And eventually we want to get to the point where the smoothing file almost gets it right where it needs to be and we can take it over and buff it a little later. We're not going to do the buffing right now. Right now I'm just going to take it to the medium file level. I'm going to hit the two sides until they fit into uh, the body. And then I can hit the back as well. I want to make sure that is roughly flat. I'm going to leave the back slightly rough, as you can see here. Uh, I just want it to be able to be smooth up at the edge because the front edge is the only thing that's going to be touching. The back edge will be lifted up by a screw. Now for the, the main surface on this, we're just going to slowly work into it. Uh, find for small things like this, it's great when you can put them up into a hand screw vise and then put that vise in your vise. It lifts it up a little higher, making it easier to work at and easier to get into. And you can just slowly take your time. And I really enjoy this process where you can kind of zen out. Now we need to drill a hole in the back of this and then tap it for a quarter 20 bolt. And this would be what actually tightens it down. So rather than having a lever that pops, there's a bolt on top. And that's uh, fairly common for most infill planes. So we're going to start by finding center. Um, in this case, I'm just going to eyeball it because uh, I don't really need anything particular. And I'm going to start with a smaller hole than I need. And I'm going to make sure that that is nice and level. Look how smoothly this brace works. It's amazing what happens with a demon-possessed yellow brace. <laughs> For the uh, the bit I was using, I found out yeah, it wasn't quite sharp enough, so I had to hand sharpen that one. And yes, you can actually hand sharpen twist bits. It takes a little bit of skill and a little bit of practice, but it can very, very uh, easily be done. Then I'm going to grab my tap and start tapping it down in. 
tapping brass I find to be relatively fun, as long as you take your time and do it well. Also want to make sure I chant for both the entrance and exit to this just to give a nice clean surface. Uh, they, they work out pretty well. Now I wanted to take this body out after doing all the peening and I found out <laughs> it was in there pretty well. And so I actually ended up using some wedges to push it away from the back uh, and that slid it out fairly nicely. And now we need to actually go and start making the wooden blocks that are going to fit into this. Now I was going back and forth and using beach and using something really cool. And then I found this block. Uh, this is 500 year old uh, English oak. It is really beautiful stuff, and it's got a lot of character in it. I'm thinking this will make a really good uh, base for it. So we're going to rip it down close to the thickness again. We want to make sure this is a really tight fit. I want it to be something that, that you kind of have to squeeze into place. So we're making it larger than it needs to be, and then we can plane it back. I want to, again, bring the two sides down parallel to the front. Uh, making this much bigger it needs to be because we actually make two blocks out of this. One is the front nose and the other one is actually the back housing that will be the bed for the iron because the iron will actually slide on this and then have the tote uh, which will lock into that which we'll be covering later on. Uh, we want to make sure everything is nice and square and true and really, really close to the size. I'm going to do the, the final fitting on the exact size once I've cut these two blocks down. One of them, I'm just going to start with a rectangle, and the other one, I'm going to go ahead and put the 45 degree on it. This will be the, the bed angle for the iron. I know some people will want it to be a higher angle, a, a York pitch or something of that nature. Um, and for something like this, I, I could do that, but really I, I like the, the 45 for the general all around. So I can cut off the front piece, and then we can start cutting off the 45 degree. Uh, making sure I'm right on the line, I'm just going to cut on one side. I'm going to cut from corner to corner on the side I can see. And then I'm going to rotate the block, cut across the top, and cut corner to corner on the other side. And this way I know I'm always right on my line, and I get a really nice clean surface on there. can bring it back over with the, uh, the low angle plane. We can true it down and bring it to precisely 45 degrees. Now for this front block, I'm going to do some random shaping on here, and I'm just kind of playing through it. The, the back side of this front block needs to be at an angle so that the, uh, the chips have some place to go. And then we want to round the top. A lot of this uh, character shaping on it will be done later, um, but I ended up being a little bit tall for the size I needed. So all of this is being done by eye. I'm not doing anything with patterns. I'm just seeing what looks good, what feels good, and, and playing with it. This is how I find I, I learn the best. And so we can cut down that angle on the back side of this front block. Now we need to round those edges. And for that, I find that coming in with a good hand-stitched rasp, just it's beautiful, it's fast, it's efficient, and it allows you to have that good feeling into it. Um, so I, you know, one of the ways you can do it with a chisel, one of the ways you can do it with a spoke shave, another ways you can do it with a rasp. It's one of those fun things where you can do it however you want. And I actually really enjoy the rasp. I want to make this fit exactly. It needs to come down by a few shavings and then we can make it slide in there. And that's, that's what I want. I want a really nice, tight, clean fit. Again, we're going to shape the back half and make sure that that fits in. I want to make sure that, that has a nice tight fit. Uh, this one was a little bit tight. And so I want to come back and take another shaving off. For the back side of this, we need to do some shaping on here. And so my original thought was, I'm going to come into the chisel and notch this out. And I thought, you know, I don't get to use the turning saw that much. Um, and I, normally I would not grab the turning saw for something this thick. I find it to be a little bit uh, um, of a slow cut. But honestly, after doing it a little bit, it worked out pretty well. Um, so I may end up using this a little more often. Uh, it's one of those things where once you get the, the skill for it, it, it goes relatively quickly. This one, there ended up being a little bit of a, a turn at the end. I didn't keep it quite square. So I'm going to come in and take out some of it with the chisel, and I want to make sure it's relatively square to the side. We're going to be doing a lot more detailing on that later once we get the, the tote made for it. Uh, but in this case, we're just kind of getting it close to the shape we want, cleaning it up a little bit with a rasp and file, and making it relatively pretty. So now you can see how this fits in here and will lock down in place. And then we can bring over the, uh, the, the lever cap that we had earlier and set that in there. And now you can see how this all comes together. And oh, it's starting to be pretty. Uh, more to come. But until then, I'm having fun. So there's a story to this. About three years ago, I said, yes, I will make an infill plane and I'm going to give it away in a charity auction on the Can I Have It group. Um, I was all set to do that. Guy won it. I said, great. I started working on it and I failed. Um, I actually, the first one, I wasn't even going to shoot a video because I wanted to learn how to do all of the dovetail into this. And I tried a bunch of things and I failed. And uh, I put it aside for a little bit and I came back to it and I tried it again and I failed again. And so then I tried a third one, and I failed at that one too. 
Uh, so, I mean, it's really not that bad. And if I had power tools, making all of the brass and steel works would have been far easier. But in this case, I wanted to make this. And so finally, after failing so many times over the years, I decided I'm just gonna go get a kit that has the metal works roughly there. And one of the nice things about the St. James Bay kit is that it is, uh, it's very, very rough. There's a lot of work on here. So if you wanna do some work on it, it's just the rough pieces casted um, came out of the laser cutting. So it's very, very rough. Um, but that means you get to do a lot of work, but most of the really hard stuff is already done. So I'm gonna be doing a series here on making this infill plane and really want to go into it a little more deeply. So thus far we're up to this. I'm gonna be doing a video on making the handle and fitting that and seating that all in there. Then we're gonna do a video on how to actually put all this together and to rivet the sides on. Uh, and th there's a lot more to do on this. And so <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping to have this done sometime and then I can ship it out to the, the person who won uh, the charity auction and really helped out Wounded Waters. Um, it was a really cool charity. And if you haven't seen it, they do it once a year on Can I Have It? So uh, go take a look at that. And if you haven't been to Can I Have It, you, you really need to. Um, Can I Have It Facebook group on YouTube. It is one of the great places for finding hand tools. Um, they do an auction every weekend and then they have sales throughout the week. Um, so kind of fun. But yeah, um, <laughs> we're finally going to make this happening and uh, we'll make this up. So I'm really looking forward to getting this all together and uh, getting it off to uh, the guy who won it. So stay tuned for next one and uh, we'll have some fun. I think I'll do it for now. If you have any questions, thoughts, ideas, things I could have done better, things I could learn, please let me know because I really want to learn on this. Um, I, this is one of these things that's kind of stretching me in different ways. Now that we're finally getting to the woodworking, ah, I can do this. Um, the, the riveting and the brass work, it's been a long time since I've done anything quite like that and this has um, really kind of stretched me. So, But if you really want to help out even farther, think about becoming one of these fancy people over here. They're the fantastic, wonderful, benevolent, gorgeous people over on Patreon. Because without patrons or members, um, I wouldn't be able to buy the kits for this. The, the kit is actually relatively expensive. I could probably go out and buy an old in infill plane already, um, but I want to have the experience of, of learning this. And that's really one of the things I love about hand tools is, is learning. So uh, if you'd like to help out with that, you know what to do. Patreon, links below, all that type of stuff. I think I'll do it for now. Until next time, have a wonderful day. This is an infill plane. Uh, many of you don't know this. They also used to make another plane where the wood was on the outside, the metal was on the inside. It's an exfill plane.